Back when I was restoring gear slats for a holiday, I fixed up my old proa. It was very fun to sail and took me back to the proa community after a decade away, but it was slightly too bulky to bring along with me. When you have a big boat, you also need a little boat. I had this great little kayak, I can move surprising stuff with it, but not a sheet of plywood for another person. I've always wanted a sailing tender, but I have a catamaran. Shouldn't the tender also be a multi-hull? Obviously it should be a pro up, since that is the most interesting multi-hull. I've actually built three different pro back in my twenties, but the question is, could I build a boat, on my boat, in a week? One of my boat building rules is that if you think you want a big boat, you should start by building a boat half the size. It'll be so much faster to build a small boat that it won't delay the big project much, and you can apply what you learnt from the small project to the big one, so you'll probably save time overall. The proa lends itself perfectly to this, because it's a little boat, the armour lashed to a big boat, the waka. I've cut out the sides of the armour and bulkheads. Next are the legs. This is where you lash on the frosting, the arca. Okay, that's everything dry fit. Let's glue it. First I paint thickened epoxy into the area to be joined. This soaks into the wood, and then the thickened epoxy chemically bonds with it, making a stronger join that meshes deeper into the wood. I've put the microfiber thickened epoxy into a freezer bag and then nipped the corner off. This allows me to pipe it to exactly where I want it, like I'm icing a fancy cake. A nice thing about this boat building style is you can often avoid measuring things. Here I'm tracing the shape of the bottom, and then I'll cut it out oversize, glue it on, and trim it later. I will tie the bottom down with strips of bicycle tube. This stuff is so useful, and every bicycle shop has a bin of old tubes and are very happy to give it to you if you ask nicely. I've got two relatively close fitting templates, the templates to the stick. I want to be fairly sure that it is right. Got quite lucky here. Just enough room that that end. Oh, and that one's right on it, so good job. This is two coats of sealer on. Given how glossy it's looking, I think it's it's ready. It's like these sides were a little bit wobbled in. So I'm just going to stick a little strut in there. Okay, the deck is now on the armour. The waka is longer than a sheet of plywood, so I have to join two pieces end to end. There are lots of ways to do that, but the simplest method, which I am using, is called a butt join. You just glue them together with a backing plate on the join. I'm also attaching a stringer along the gunnel. This doesn't go the full length of the hull, but will meet the index. So I clamped and I put sandbags on that, then decided it wasn't heavy enough. I put water. The forecast is threatening some rain today, so I'm gonna set up a tent. Somewhat like that one. I think that'll work. The plans that I drawn, I wrote 100 millimeters of rocker over a meter and a half. The rocker will come, will be about at the waterline. Since the plywood I am using for the sides is so thin, four millimeters, I decided I would make the ends a radius. I figured this would add a little stiffness compared to a straight joint.
Following switch and glue traditions, I'm fastening the ends with cable ties while I glue them. This is how the armour will fit inside the walker for storage and transportation. This time sitting inside the boat. It's pretty comfortable width. I didn't have any cardboard, so I had to make a template like this. Well, it was a lot of work getting this all lined up to where I'm happy with it, but I'm now ready to glue. You probably think I'm crazy if I'm trying to build a boat in this mess, but I have a trick. When I can't find something, I start tidying up. When you start tidying up, it causes you to look everywhere, so you find anything that's out of place. So the organizing this was over here, and then there was a plate there. I moved the plate, there was the drill. So the plan is, I'm going to lift this, carefully lift this off and put it to the side. Then I'm going to put a bead of glue all the way along the edge of the bottom. Then I'm going to put this back on and tie it down. Okay, so the thing that really determines if this is going to go smoothly or not is whether I can lift this whole thing off and put it down in one piece without the clamp slipping. I'm not sure if all of the bits touched. That might not be the best glue job. Didn't quite put it on the right place and then I had to move it over. I'll just put a next, you know, I'm going to put a big fillet on the in, on the inside in the morning. That one's okay. This one, there's still going to be, oh shit, that's not good. I'm getting the hull ready for the decks before I do epoxy work, so it doesn't end up covered in sawdust. <laughs> Everything and now there's a big back fillet. Not too worried that that will be watertight. Just put uh, 20 pumps of epoxy in. Plus fiberglassing the butt join. Once the decks are on, the ends of the hulls will become sealed buoyancy chambers. It's important to make sure that they are very well sealed because I never want to open them again. I thought I was saving some time by not cutting out the decks but it made clamping much more difficult. Six mil plywood is really quite stiff and pulling it down onto a curve with the ratchet straps, I think the overhang doesn't really help. It would be much better if I'd cut, cut it approximately. One trick I have though is once this is tight, you can put pressure on a particular area with a wedge. to go to town and get some fiberglass. So I got my bike and my kayak. I think this one might work. Just should dig right across the channel over there. through the mud to somewhere to tie it. Some sort of pagan monument. As well as moving the bike with the kayak, I discovered I could move the kayak with the bike. Next I'm making the manu. Manu means bird. The manu are the flourish that sticks up at the end of the hulls. This helps stop water coming aboard and creates a spot for the tack of the sail to sit.
I wasn't sure how high to make them, so I made them 13 centimeters, because 13 is the luckiest number on the thrower. installed. To save money, I decided to only glass to the waterline. I've marked the edge with masking tape and will cut off the excess fiberglass before it sets fully. Fiberglass. This is tight radius, and then when I added more resin, it went under, and the glass floated up on top of it. I think if I had just squeegeed it, it might have might have worked. That's where I had masking tape. So that's enough glass on this. I'm installing soft chain plates for the shunt line. This is used to pull the sail to either end. I'm just epoxying in a loop of Umfway rope, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, also known by the brand names Spectra and Dyneema. But of course, my rope here isn't Spectra or Dyneema, it's very cheap Umfway that I bought on AliExpress. Umfway is stronger than steel wire of the same diameter. This stuff is left over from re rigging my kilo in which I did a lap of the North Island a few years back. Drilling holes for some rope handles. Before I put the deck on, I made sure there was a big group of thickened epoxy here. Finally, fiberglassing the bottom. We're nearly finished. I will roller it on and then squeegee the excess out. I'll wait for it to go sticky and then add a little bit more epoxy to fill the weave. Cutting off the excess fiberglass along the masking tape to create a neat edge. I'm really happy with how this turned out. The holes are waterproof now, sealed with epoxy, so I can put it in the water. But epoxy degrades in ultraviolet, so I need to try and keep it covered and paint it soon. This is my preferred lashing technique, just a short loop of thicker rope tightened with a lever. I saw a lot of bamboo scaffolding assembled this way in Southeast Asia.
also thank you to Michael for the excellent hot tea tips. I make this humble sacrifice to hunt by to <laughs> keep the nurses and it's pro isolate best tip bless both hands. happy with that. Be sure to catch my next video where I get Waimea sailing.